So we've heard a number of rumors about the devices that are going to be coming out with Apple's new M1X higher performance Apple Silicon chip, but we haven't heard a whole lot about the M1X itself. Well, about 10 minutes ago, someone who follows me on Twitter, go check that out at Luke Miani, by the way, sent me a link to some information about the M1X chip that is so staggering that I don't really believe it. But this is Apple we're talking about, and this is the M1X, so like, you know, all bets are kind of off at this point. So I figured with a healthy dose of skepticism, why don't we take a look at this and talk about the M1X chip? So you may remember back in August, I made a video where I extremely accurately, to my surprise, projected the performance of the M1 chip. At the time, I was referring to it as the A14X, as sort of like a placeholder, but basically, uh, the reason why I've brought this up now in multiple videos is because I was so surprised at how accurate my math ended up being. Basically, all I did was apply the average gains from an A to an X, and then the X to the next A, and just applied that to the leaked performance benchmarks that we were looking at for the A14. And it ended up being extremely accurate within like one or 2%, which was just hilarious. Now, so far, a lot of people have been asking why I haven't done that for the M1X. And the simple answer is because it's a little bit more complicated. It would require a little bit more thought. However, that being said, I would be willing to take a stab at it if you guys want to see a video like that. So let me know in the comments below and make sure you're subscribed if you want me to take a stab at guessing what the M1X performance is gonna look like. But while you're waiting for that to happen, let's talk about the thing that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which is the reason why you clicked on it. And that is that someone has claimed to have some sort of information about the M1X chip. And I'm very skeptical, but very curious. So the site in question is CPU Monkey. This is similar to a lot of sites out there that aggregate user benchmark data for comparison purposes. So like uh, cpu.userbenchmark.com, stuff like that. And they claim to have some sort of data on the M1X. Now, before we dive into this and take a look at what they are claiming to have, let me just put a disclaimer here. Absolutely none of this is verified. Do not expect anything that we talk about to be accurate in any way. We have no idea where they're getting these numbers from. For all I know, they could be guessing just as much as I might do if I make a similar video where I try to guess the M1X. That could very well be what's going on here. Uh, but that's not to say that it's invalid because, you know, my guess ended up being accurate. So let's not knock it until we see it. Uh, so let's take a look. So basically, what they are saying is that this is the sort of organization for the M1X. They're saying a frequency of 3.2 gigahertz, that's the same as the M1. They're saying 12 cores with no hyper threading, that makes sense. And what they're saying here is eight Firestorm cores, those are the performance cores, and then four Ice Storm, those are the efficiency cores. Now that's in line with what I would expect for the M1X. I know there's been a number of reports in recent weeks and months that are kind of going crazy with core counts up to like 64 performance cores. But keep in mind, we are still talking about a laptop here. And I think it would make sense for Apple to gradually increase their core count as they go along. So for this, which is, you know, a processor that you're going to find in a 16 inch MacBook Pro, a 14 inch MacBook Pro, maybe some iMacs and potentially like a, a higher end Mac mini. So it makes sense for power consumption reasons that, you know, double the amount of performance cores, keep the efficiency cores the same. 12 cores, I think makes a lot of sense. Now, if we move down to the internal graphics, they're basically just kind of saying it's going to be double what the M1 has. So the M1 has 128 execution units and a max GPU memory of eight gigabytes, and it has eight cores. So this is basically just twice that. And again, I think that actually makes a lot of sense. You know, if you're doubling the performance cores, then you can also double the graphics cores. 
Apple has shown that they don't need to overcomplicate their CPUs. I mean, the iPhone since the A11 has been too big for little, and then now the iPad is on four big for little, and then now the M1 is four big for little. Why introduce complexity that doesn't need to exist? You know, double the performance, double the graphics, move on. Moving on to memory, it's a similar story. Double the amount of RAM with a max of 32 gigabytes. This is what a lot of people were bummed about with the M1. And then I could foresee people being bummed about this as well, because if you remember, the 16 inch MacBook Pro can be equipped with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So if this ends up being true and 32 gigabytes is the maximum amount, that would represent a decrease in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, in a 13 or 14 inch MacBook Pro, it would be the same as what you can already do, which is get a maximum of 32 gigabytes. Uh, so I could foresee that being a little bit annoying. Actually, if it's in an iMac, that would definitely be annoying because a lot of people put tons of RAM in their iMacs. So we'll have to see if this ends up being true or not. So moving on to thermal management, they're saying that the TDP is gonna be 35 watts with a configurable 45 watt option. So this is actually pretty similar to the way that the M1 works. In the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini, it has a higher TDP than in the MacBook Air. So the way I could see this playing out is for example, in a 14-inch MacBook Pro, it could be 35 watts. Maybe even in a 16-inch MacBook Pro, it would be 35 watts. But in something like an iMac, which has a lot bigger thermal capacity and more power, you can put 45 watts through it. Now, in terms of the technical details, you may notice a release date of Q2 2021. If I had to guess, they just pulled that directly from the leaks that are suggesting that that's when a new generation of MacBook Pro is coming out. So I don't necessarily think that we're gonna gain any new knowledge from this particular part. Similarly, if you look down at devices using this processor, this this looks like just a guess to me. You know, a MacBook Pro 14 and 16, that's kind of what the rumors have been suggesting. And then an iMac 27, 2021, see this one, this really proves that there's a lot of guesswork involved because first of all, I would expect an M1X to come up in a smaller iMac. I think a 27 inch iMac would be more likely to get an M1Z or whatever like than a you know, 16 or 20 core processor. Uh, that would make more sense to me. I think an M1X, if it's gonna show up in an iMac, is going to be in the, the redesigned like 23 or 24 inch iMac. Uh, and then there's also the fact that we don't know that there will be a 27 inch iMac. It's possible that we could get like a 30 or a 32 inch iMac. If Apple's supposedly increasing the screen size on the smaller, the 4K iMac, I don't know why they wouldn't do that on the bigger one. It's either that or they shrink the bezels sort of iPad Pro style. Uh, I might make another video if we get some more info on new iMacs. I, I, I think I'm gonna put together a video talking about that. So let me know if you wanna see that as well. Now, at this point, we're gonna get on to the really juicy stuff and that is the benchmarks. Now, again, I, I gotta stress, we don't know where they're getting these numbers. So take it with as much salt as you can find in your entire house. If you don't have any salt, what I want you to do is pause the video, go to the grocery store and get one of those little things of salt. You can get the store brand, by the way, it's cheaper than if you buy you know, the, the brand name stuff, save a dollar, get a full thing of salt, pour that out on your desk and just start eating it because we have no idea where they're getting these numbers from. If you look here, the Cinebench R23 single core, essentially they're saying it's identical to the M1. That makes sense because the types of cores are not changing. It's just the amount of cores. So when we go down to Cinebench R23, multi-core, oh my God. <coughs> what? Excuse me? So they mean to tell me that this 35 to 45 watt laptop processor is going to be nearing the performance of a Ryzen 7 5800X. Color me impressed in a very, very skeptical way because holy moly. The craziest thing is that a lot of this is the same reaction that I had in August when I came up with my M1 
numbers. I thought, okay, I mean, that would be great, but we'll have to wait and see. And then lo and behold, it ended up being even a little bit better than, than what I had guessed. Like if I was wrong, it was, it was conservative. When you look at the M1, you know, you're talking laptop Core i9 performance with about 20 watts of power consumption. If you then double the power consumption and the number of performance cores, this doesn't seem that far-fetched. The processors on this list have 100 watt TDPs. And when they're going at full tilt with turbo boost and all that stuff, they're oftentimes using more than 100 watts. And we're now looking at an M1X that does about the same in terms of their Geekbench scores with less than half now, obviously, since we're taking that with a grain of salt, we gotta take the graphics chart with a grain of salt here. They're saying a theoretical uh, FP32 performance of 5200, which is conveniently exactly double what the M1 is. Uh, I don't know what figures they're using for this, but I mean, that would be obviously insane for an M1X. I don't know that you would necessarily be able to get an even, you know, doubling, just because you're doubling the number of graphics cores doesn't necessarily mean that you're doubling the performance output, right? That's just, that's not how these things scale. And the same applies to the M1X, by the way. Um, so I'm not really sure about that. And that doesn't even include the fact that we, we should expect uh, with the 16 inch MacBook Pro and with these iMacs, there's another Apple Silicon processor in the works here, a GPU. We don't know anything about the Apple Silicon GPU, really. I mean, we, you could assume, I don't know, maybe they'll take 32 uh, of these graphics cores. I don't know if they're developing a specialized, dedicated graphics core specifically for these GPUs, or if they're just gonna reuse what's already in the M1. But either way, I mean, it's gonna be, crazy. I'm trying not to get too excited here because as I mentioned over and over again, there's absolutely no verification for this. You know, I got to go get my own bucket of salt to, to take with this information. But you know, if just looking at a comparison here between this so-called M1X and a 10900K, obviously we know in single core, the M1 is a monster and the M1X will pretty much continue to be exactly the same. And then if you look at the, the multi-core, 83% of a 10900K in terms of Geekbench, uh, sorry, Cinebench R23. That's pretty crazy. Hopefully at some point in the near future, we'll get some more concrete info, like, you know, some actual leaks, um, or maybe we'll even find out that this was a leak all along. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani, and I'll see you all in the next video.